Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to talk you through a bit of a checklist for how you would onboard a new employee to Asana. And I think this is a process that is often overlooked and I've seen all too often managers or directors kind of dump Asana on their team or they onboard a new salesperson and kind of throw Asana at them and expect them to just learn it. And if you can just spend even just a little bit of time walking through why we use Asana, the best practices and how to use just some of the simple features, it really helps introduce it in a really kind of user-friendly way so that they can get up and running on Asana much uh, quicker. And it's just gonna mean that everyone can kind of follow good best practices and uh, it's gonna make that whole onboarding process a lot easier for the person being onboarded. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do want one-on-one -on -one help with setting up Asana, optimizing it for your business, or for things like this, training new uh, team members, then check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting and support options. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do before you actually send the invite to invite somebody new into Asana is to decide where are you actually going to invite them because where you invite them will determine how much visibility they have in the account. And depending on how you're using Asana and your business, there might be things that you want to keep private. So to run down the kind of visibility options, you can invite them to a team. So I've just got this Asana demo team and you can see I've got three members here. So I can click invite here and I can send an email and I can invite them to the team. However, if I invite them to the team, they are gonna have visibility of all of the public projects in the team. So public projects are projects like this one at the top that doesn't have the little padlock. These ones with the padlock, these are private. So at the moment, this private project, you can see the members up here, I'm actually the only member of this project. So the other two people, Jarvis and Warwick, they can't see this project in their sidebar. They can see these other ones that don't have the padlocks, but they can't see this one because they haven't been added at the project level. So that's the first place you can invite them is at the team level. You actually don't have to invite them to a team. If I had somebody who is just helping me with one of my clients, for example, I could invite somebody at this project level. So I could click up here, I could send, I could invite them to this one project and that way rather than being part of the team and seeing all of the public projects in the team, they would only see this one project. The other place I could do it is I could just invite them to a specific task. Maybe I don't even want them to see the entire project. I could assign someone just this one task and if I assign them and send the invite through here, they're gonna log into Asana. They're not gonna see anything in their sidebar. They're not gonna see any projects. They're literally gonna have that one task. So that's something that's quite common if you're inviting like a client into Asana, where you only want to give them access to a few simple tasks that you need them to do. So that's the first step is to just think about where you're gonna add them just so that you get that visibility correct based on what you want them to see. The next thing you're gonna to want to do if you haven't done this already is think about the uh, conventions or the best practices that you want this new person to follow. And this is good to do not just for anyone new that you're onboarding, but your entire team using Asana. So I have a project like this called Asana Conventions that kind of defines the best practices around how our team uses Asana. So for things like, when do we use email versus chat? And when do we use Asana? Um, I, I get everyone to turn off email notifications. Uh, how do we communicate using comments, project conversations, team conversations? How should we use due dates? Uh, who's allowed to create tags? How do we use templates? So there's lots of little things like this. How do we use you know, Slack versus Asana that you wanna think about uh, when onboarding a new person or even just rolling out Asana to your team because we really want everyone to use Asana in a consistent way. If some people comment in Asana, but other people are still using email or Slack to communicate, it's actually going to make things harder because now you've got communication happening in a, th a few different channels. So you really want to define when do we use Asana to communicate versus email versus Slack or Microsoft Teams? How do we use due dates so that we don't miss deadlines? Uh, what are the important tags that people need to be aware of? And I like documenting all of this in a project like this. So number one, you just have it documented for anyone to review at any time. But number two, it's something you can refer to when onboarding that new salesperson so that they are using Asana consistently with how the rest of the team uses it as well. From there, I think it's safe to send the invite to the person you're onboarding and then sit down with them for an initial training session to walk them through some of the basics. 
And the first thing I would do is explain why you're actually using Asana. What is Asana's role in your company? How does it work alongside other tools like email, like your CRM, and just explain uh, the purpose behind it. Because I think it's important to keep that in, your, in the back of your mind or the new employee to have that in the back of their mind so they understand this is not just like a, a nice to do. We're not doing this for the fun of it. This is actually a serious tool that we really want to put effort and input into so that the data and everything is up to date. I think explaining that purpose is really important. And again, a step that a lot of people often skip. The next thing I would do is walk them through the account structure. So depending on how much visibility they've been given, whether you've invited them to a team or a project, I would kind of run down the sidebar and explain, this is the team, this is who's in here, uh, this is this project, this is what we use it for, this is this other project, this is the kind of thing we put in here. And just explain from a high level standpoint how everything is organized and where they will find specific tasks and projects. I would also explain, you know, the sidebar navigation. So you've got, um, you know, the home screen, the my tasks, the inbox. Uh, we'll come to a bit of that in a little bit, but you might just explain briefly how you navigate around Asana. The next thing I would do is show them how to then work inside of a task, because that's really where most things happen in Asana. So I would show them what the components of a good task are. So writing a clear task name at the top, something that's actionable, explain how they should decide and how they should go about assigning tasks, who, what do different tasks, types of tasks, who do they get assigned to, uh, explain how to use due dates correctly, when to use a date range, and how they could set tasks up to repeat. Show them how they can store notes uh, in tasks in the description, how they can attach files and documents to a task, and then how they can break their task down into subtasks if needed as well. And that's a really good point where you can go down to the bottom of the task and show them how you can communicate in Asana. That's one of the really uh, important kind of parts of Asana to onboard them to is how do we communicate? So I would explain how you can post a comment down the bottom here, explain how the collaborators down the bottom, these are the people that are gonna get notified when people post comments or make changes to a task. And that's a really good point where uh, uh, in your training where you can talk about the inbox and you can explain that the inbox is this area of Asana where they can they will be notified about all the changes to tasks, uh, new tasks being assigned, updates, comments, things like that. And at this point, I would really emphasize the importance of having them check the inbox regularly a couple of times a day so that they are always up to date with the latest changes on their tasks. This is one of the most crucial parts of onboarding a new employee. I would then show them from there, the My Tasks screen, and show them how they can use this page to plan their work. And so I would talk them through how they can sort their tasks by due date or by project, and they can move tasks around, and this is where they can work from on a daily basis to see what they need to do and, uh, and keep up to date with their work. And to be honest, that's about it. That's all I would cover in an initial training session with a new employee. Obviously, Asana is a very powerful tool. There's a lot it can do. We haven't even looked at portfolios or templates or anything else just yet. But when onboarding a new employee, we really don't want to overwhelm people. So I would just show them the really important things in terms of how to navigate, how to create tasks, checking the inbox, and managing their my tasks. You can then introduce more advanced features later on after a few weeks or a few months or when the situation arises where you need to show them other more advanced features. But in the beginning, we really wanna keep it simple and not overwhelm people with too much. What I would also do, really important step, is have them go to their profile settings Obviously check that everything is correct. You know, they've got, they can put their name, their role, department, and a bit of a bio in here. They might want to check and review some of these notification options. The most important thing though, is in the uh, hacks, I believe it is, we wanna turn on extra delight. That's just gonna mean they get lots of unicorns and yetis and seals and things flying across the screen. Definitely have them uh, turn that on as well. And then finally, if there are any tasks that you can assign them, even if you just want to create some kind of dummy example tasks, assign them a few tasks, even for the other parts of onboarding. If this is a new employee, maybe they need to meet with the HR department to sign a contract or get health and safety training. I would even have an onboarding template set up in Asana ready to go. I think Asana even have one in here. If you go to the new projects, uh, if you go to the temporary template library, new employee onboarding. There you go. I would even have them run through a bit of a checklist like this. It, it's a nice way of number one, onboarding them to your company, but also they get experience using Asana 
as well. Now, if you need any more help with this, check out the link in the description below. I have a program called Master Asana that you can join. And in that program, you get access to an online course that I've created that teaches you all about how to take full advantage of Asana, how to onboard people correctly. I go into a lot more detail about this process. And there are even videos that you can have your new team members watch uh, so that if you don't want to do the training, you can have me train them for you through that online course. So all of the details are in the description below. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave me a comment below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.